to God the glory, to Prime Creator the glory. Chapter 16 Though your sins be as scarlet. Sin is the breaking of the law. It is the transgression against the laws of progress. Yea, beloved, the breaking of the laws is living contrary or out of tune with the great loving rules necessary for your own perfection and glory and happiness and abundance of all good. Whether you live up to the laws given or not makes no difference to Prime Creator. They were not revealed out of eternity for Prime Creator, nor for Prime Creator's benefit. They were brought forth for you. Only you can be injured if you fail to fulfill such holy laws as have been revealed through the goodness and mercy of our Prime Creator of love. God cannot be hurt nor injured by anything you do or fail to do. You can only hurt yourself if you persist in wrongdoing. Know this, every law was given for your glory and profit and joy and progress. They are formed out of eternity and they are eternal and cannot be changed. The laws were given not to restrict you nor to make you miserable and unhappy, yet as eternal principles upon your soul, upon that your soul must progress into its eternal glory of complete fulfillment. There are eternal laws concerning all things eternal, mathematics, chemistry, music, harmony, and the perfection of yourself in mind, body, and soul are all based upon eternal laws that cannot be put aside if the right solution is to be obtained. These eternal laws existed long before this world began. They will exist long after this world has fulfilled its destiny, for they are eternal. These divine laws of our almighty, prime, creative force or supreme were not meant to be a stumbling block to you. They were given to bring about your own ultimate good, your own happiness and perfection and progress and complete joy. None of the laws of prime creator are restricting in joy. The laws of Prime Creator alone can bring a fullness of joy. They do not bring a wild hysteria. These laws fulfill the divine majesty of dignity and inward rejoicing that vibrates in turn with the glorified melody of the universe. This is the great joy that is beyond expression, beyond anything that can possibly express and when one tries to express it in shouting or physical expression, he or she is profaning its majesty of dignified power of fulfillment. It is the power and majesty and dignity of all good. It is a joy of spirit that overcomes all doubts, all fears, all light-mindedness and darkness, and could never be expressed in unseemly shouting, nor babblings, nor undignified actions. Within this joy is contained the singing power of divine majesty and poise and purity. It is the narrow little rituals and rules that men have formulated, which are the restrictors of joy, and bind my children down with long, sanctimonious faces. Such laws and creeds are formed by men who know not God, Prime Creator. Take, for instance, 
Beloved, the feeling you receive over any good act you do, any service you render, every precious smile given, every kind word spoken, and realize that if you went out shouting about the good received it would be instantly dissipated. These small momentary actions you do bring to you a taste of the great joy you will receive if you will take upon you my yoke and begin to work toward the fulfilling of the whole law or the entire law. There's no holes in this law that I speak. Partake, O beloved, of the power of obedience. Yea, bask in the unspeakable glory of forgiveness that you might be forgiven. Glory in the immeasurable joy of love, love so pure, so divine, so Christ-like and forgiving and merciful that it can go forth to heal and bless a world. Then you will comprehend the joy of that I speak the joy that is spiritual, that is developed in a sober and controlled mind, a mind that has overcome all light-mindedness, frivolity and discordant, evil thinking. Whenever the power and spirit of Prime Creator is expressing, there is joy in the sunshine, in the flower, in the song, of the bird in the gurgling brook or babbling. No, no babbling, right? Can't say clear. The brook in the growth of a tree in the rhythm of the rain is the boundless vibration of singing joy and ecstasy being offered up to the throne of prime creator. Joy in ecstasy, joy in ecstasy, joy, 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 joy. In the laws of righteousness is contained your joy, for they are for you, not against you. These sacred laws are for your own happiness and progress and growth and infinite eternal joy and everlasting glory. In the laws of righteousness is contained your joy, for they are for you. Oh, I get to read that again. And not against you. These sacred laws are for your own happiness and progress and growth and infinite eternal joy and everlasting glory. Because the laws of prime creator or progress are eternal, they cannot be put aside to admit any sin nor make any sin right by giving it the sanction of prime creator. It is impossible to change the laws of mathematics. It is impossible to change the laws of your progress, for they are heavenly laws and are irrevocable and cannot be changed, not even by prime creator. For prime creator is unchangeable. Otherwise, prime creator would cease to be prime creator. And prime creator ceaseth, ceaseth not to be prime creator and prime creator changes not neither can prime creator's laws be changed to admit your transgressions it is because the laws are eternal that sin cannot be allowed or looked upon with the least degree of allowance you have your free agency to serve sin if you choose but then you are so but then you are no longer free but the servant of sin those who have made sin their master always blasphemy against prime creator giving prime creator the blame for the consequences the way of the sinner is hard and brings not brings nothing except unhappiness misery and despair and sin is not allowed upon the pathway of perfection. Damnation is the same whether it is spelled with an N or without it. When the stream or river is damned, the progress of the waters is stopped and it cannot go on. 
When my children are damned by the blocks or walls they have placed in their own paths, their progress is stopped and they are damned. Their suffering is with them and of their own making and will continue to increase. It will be intensified when they realize that they have been left far behind as they fed only upon the evil of the tree of knowledge. The good will be theirs only when they leave the evil behind or overcome it. Then will the evil with its consequent suffering be utilized for good. This is true if one has not remained too long in sin or sinned too much to be forgiven in this world or in the world to come. This is possible. There is no possible progress as long as the sin rema remains. Again, there is no possible progress as long as the sin remains. The joy, the victory, the progress and glory is for him and for her who overcomes. Dearly beloved children of mine, you must understand, understand that it is your own sins that block your progress and retard you, holding you back from all that is perfect and beautiful and good. Your own great destiny and divine pattern of fulfillment is unrealized because you have rejected the laws of their completion and bringing forth. Yea, beloved, you alone block your progress, for it is impossible to go and to stay at the same time. If you fulfill or live the laws, you have to progress, progress. You who love your sins more than you love me and will therefore not let them go, must continue to carry them until the burden of them becomes so great your hearts will break under the unendurable load. If in the hour of supreme anguish and despair you turn unto me and offer me your broken hearts and give me your burdens, I will be able to help place your feet upon the pathway of light. If your sins are so great upon you that you are completely enslaved by them and have no strength within you with, uh, with that to fight, then call upon my name for help to overcome. And I promise you that whenever you call upon me for help to overcome some sin or weakness or unrighteous desire, I will be there. As long as you call upon me, I shall never fail to give you help and comfort and strength. And when you learn to love me more than you love your sin or weakness, the unrighteousness will be cast from you as the throwing off of the shackling chains of bondage, and you shall stand free. You must understand, however, that you will continue to serve that which you love most, me or the sin. Only as you give me your love and as you love Prime Creator with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength can you have the power to rise above the sin and completely overcome it. If at first you lack the faith, the full desire, or the great love, then call upon my name and I will give you my strength. Yea, I invite you now to come and place your hand in mine, that you be not left behind as the race of men move on upward into the light. You must realize that even your slightest sin will detain you and keep you from fulfilling all that has been promised unto you. And now, my beloved, I would give again the sacred keys on that the, the forgiveness of your sins is based. Forgive, and you shall be forgiven. Those who cannot forgive cannot be forgiven. The very power of being forgiven is contained in the ability to forgive. Those who carry their grudges and hates and spirit of retaliation with them are carrying a burden of such deep darkness, they become actually clothed in the darkness of their own dislikes. 
and so I speak gently these words. For all have sinned, your own great release will come when you can forgive. If you cannot forgive, you are carrying upon your shoulders your neighbor's or your brother's failures and transgressions, and you are also carrying the burden of your own sins, weaknesses, innumerable errors and mistakes. When I command you to judge not, lest you be judged, I was revealing the great eternal law by, by that you could escape the great judgment. Surely the burden of your own mistakes is enough to bear. Why carry your neighbors also? Know this, my children, that your weaknesses are, your, are realities of bondage and damnation for your progress is stopped by them. No matter how trivial your sins, your faults, and failings may appear to you, for you are prone to excuse your individual mistakes and weaknesses, they are your stumbling blocks. And it is impossible for Prime Creator to look upon sin with the least degree of allowance. For in Prime Creator's rules, sin cannot be allowed. Prime Creator may have compassion on the sinner, yet for the sin there is no allowance whatsoever. The sin and the weakness has to be left behind before you can go on. Whatever your sins and weaknesses are, you may be sure that you have or had at least five of them, not counting the seal of a hardened heart and a blinded mind, and have or should have been removed uh, before this record came into your hands. Most of my children carry the burden of an unforgiving heart, and therefore they are weighted down with both their neighbors and their own weaknesses and transgressions. Yea, it is true that I give, I give men weaknesses that they might become strong. For in the overcoming does your strength live and your power increase. Know this, beloved children of mine, that something cannot be made out of nothing. Yet out of darkness, out of fear and failure and negation can be brought forth conditions that are positive if you will utilize them aright. Yea, error can be transmuted into strength. The very energy contained in the negative condition can be transmuted into dynamic, potent, living power. Transmuted energy always serves as a leverage to lift you higher. Yea, years of striving can be accomplished in one great stride by using the power of ill as a leverage, whatever ill you have, to transform the condition. All the power of the negatives, the hates and dislikes and fears still exist, yet they are converted into good by overcoming them. The power and energy of these transformed forces are immeasurable and they are yours to utilize for they will become subjected unto you and will be transformed into forces of life and light as you overcome. The power contained in any condition of negativism and darkness and transgression can be tremendous when overcome by the power of love and a desire to serve Prime Creator. And always their power is yours to utilize, my beloved, if you will reach out your hand and bring them under control. Utilize your failures to obtain wisdom, your weaknesses to become strong, your sins to learn the power of forgiving, compassion, and your suffering to perfect the gift of obedience. In this way, the whole law can be fulfilled in you, and you can be prepared to receive the fullness of Prime Creator by your own purification. All that is necessary in this great transition, my beloved, is for you to change your way of thinking and your way of feeling. Yea, gather to you the gift of divine compassion 
and mercy, and you shall receive mercy. Forgive, and you shall be forgiven. Love, and the gates of eternity will begin to open, and you will become a divine bearer of the very fruit of the tree of life. Yea, all things will become subjected unto you, and you will be filled with glory and with light. This is your true do dominion. Yea, power is yours to subdue the earth and all conditions upon it. Suffering, which is caused by your own attitudes and thoughts, is to teach you obedience. And the full and complete obedience to the will of Prime Creator contains the pattern of your own perfection, the complete fulfillment of all glory in you. In the gift of divine obedience is contained the glory of your own majesty, the fullness of your joy, and all that is possible for you to receive from the loving abundance of Prime Creator. Within the gift of obedience is the power to completely overcome the self. When you desire God's will, prime creator's will, more than you desire anything else, when you can enjoy your misery or any heartbreak or calamity, not in self-pity, yet in gratitude to accept the will of prime creator, the evil will begin to flee from you. Even the evil of your own creating will be dissolved and there will be no more suffering. Within this law of gratitude is also contained the promise. He and she who are thankful in all things shall be made glorious and the things of this earth shall be added unto him and her and a hundredfold, yea, or more. And now, lest you hold to your sins and wallow in them, or permit them to hold you bound, let me speak these loving words of beautiful mercy and compassion, that you stand not forever in your sins. Though their sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. To him and her that overcometh. Beautiful, beloved children, none are without sin. He who says he is without sin is a liar, and the truth is not in him. The great glory is in the power of overcoming. Sometimes the greatest sin is the blindness, which blinds one's eyes, that he sees not his own sins, failings, and transgressions, but only his neighbors. And now I call aloud, unto the ends of the earth, that you need no longer remain in your sins. Yea, it is time again for the tree of life to bear its precious fruit of healing and eternal life. Come, beloved, that you might be prepared to not only partake of the great feast, yet be a bearer of the fruits that will be served at the feast. Yea, come unto me, and I will give you the bread and waters of life freely. Yea, come, and though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. To him who overcometh. Yea, look up and comprehend the power of my promises unto you. Acknowledge your sins and weaknesses to yourselves, then bring them unto me, for I am your confessor, and your sins concerned not, nothing except yourselves. Those whom you have injured or wronged by your transgressions and me, yea, bring them to me and go thy way and sin no more. Gather up your prides, your prejudices, your hates, your fears and jealousies and lusts and selfishness, and bring them to me, for surely you have been heavy laden. Yea, come, and I will give you rest. Come, and I will gather you under my wing. Be not afraid, it is I. It is true that I do not look upon sin with the least degree of allowance. Yet for you, who will bring your burden of sin to me, I will give you of my strength that you might overcome. 
Justice is for those who do not overcome, who continue to enjoy their sins and transgressions, and who seek to justify and condone them. For such is justice ordained. Mercy is for those who come unto me and ask for power to overcome. For such is mercy given. Develop mercy within you and you shall obtain mercy. Even as forgiveness is for those who forgive. In the power of forgiving is contained the pure, divine, Christ-like compassion that brings its healing, mercy, and reveals the power to overcome. Yeah, yea, come unto me, and though your sins be as scarlet, they will become white as snow. To you who overcome, the overcoming must be accomplished within you. It is in your hands, and the greatest overcoming is to eliminate every desire for sin. This is the plan and the path whereby you may rise above your weaknesses, your trials and temptations, if you so desire, and enter again into my presence. To you who receive these teachings, in which a fool may not err, and abide them not, your condemnation will be greater. To whom much is given, much is required. Beloved, I have never given a commandment, save I prepare the way for its fulfillment. Know this, that no promise nor word of mine was ever given in vain, nor will they return unto me void and unfulfilled. They will all be fulfilled. When the command was given for you to be perfect, even as your mother and father in heaven and upon earth are perfect, it was definite and possible, else it would not have been given. And that command still stands. It has not been revoked. Down the centuries, it has stood as an open challenge waiting for you. Who could begin to believe in my words and in my teachings? Yea, it has stood waiting for you, my beloved. Who will endeavor to live by my words that you might learn of the power contained in them? and that you might know whether they are of prime creator or not. Yea, these greatest of all teachings have waited for you who have the faith to believe and the desire to live by them and to fulfill the holy promises and learn of the power of godliness. Only in this day have there been those who are great enough to believe and to begin to fulfill Though these words have stood open and calling down the centuries, they are timeless and eternal. Neither can they fail for those who will take hold of them. Yea, all things are possible to he and she who believe. To you who die in your sins, and that is how all die, for you truly die because of your own sins and not for Adam's transgressions. Know that for you is awaiting the judgment. And in that judgment will be revealed every transgression, every flaw, every weakness, every mistake, even your secret acts and thoughts. For you who pass through this judgment, there will be only justice. However, for you, beloved, who overcome, there is no judgment. For as you overcome... Your sins will be blotted out, even that they will never come in remembrance before Prime Creator. They will be as far to the north as to the south as to the east as to the west. Never to be spoken of again. This is mercy. And this is my gift to you. For this I gave my life. I did not give my life that you could continue in your sins and escape the consequences and obtain mercy 
and be held unaccountable for your transgressions. I gave my life that you might comprehend the pattern by which you too might overcome, that by believing in my promises and laying hold of my word, you could follow the pattern I gave, that you too might overcome, even as I overcame. If you have faith and a desire to fulfill my words, then come and take my hand, and I will help you to fulfill all things Yea, all the great and mighty promises made unto the children of men and women. Yea, how could you be born of the Spirit unless that Spirit that is given to abide in you begins to direct you to Prime Creator and to open your understandings that you might comprehend the power of godliness and become godly? And after you are born of the Spirit, how can you reach the full maturity even the fullness of Mother Father that has been promised from the beginning, save you continue to hunger and thirst after righteousness. Is not the main desire of an infant born of the flesh a desire and crying for food that its body might grow? And so it is for those who are born of the Spirit. There must needs be the continual hungering and thirsting after righteousness. There must be a constant desiring for more and more of my great truths that is the spiritual food that thy, that the spirit must grow. Yea, it is only the continual hungering after spiritual food that can fulfill and complete your divine maturity even until you receive of the fullness of Mother Father. All sins and weaknesses no matter what they are, are easy to overcome when you desire to serve Prime Creator more than you desire to transgress. And when you serve Prime Creator, as you think you are only serving yourselves and bringing to pass all perfection and all glory for yourselves, in the complete fulfilling of the two first and great commandments is the power to overcome all sin, cast out all fear. Fulfill all perfection. Live them and see if they do not contain the very power to comprehend and know Prime Creator. And me whom they sent, that you might receive life eternal. Yea, and the Spirit and the Bride say, Come, and let him that heareth say, Come. And let him that is a thirst come, and whosoever will let them take of the water, partake of the water of life freely, that he and she reach his maturity and receive of my fullness and be purified even as I am pure, for the day is at hand. Oh, uh -huh. this will complete chapter 16, though your sins be as scarlet. He and she who overcomes, they will be made white as snow. Oh, so be it. And it is so.